this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Gear Fit 2 Pro. Now, I reviewed the Gear Fit 2 non-Pro around a year ago, and it was a pretty popular review, so I figured you folks would like to see what's new from Samsung now. This one is $20 more, and the big takeaway for this one is, is that it is waterproof to 50 meters, which is 164 feet, which is way deeper than I'm ever going to go in the water. You know, we have a pool in the back, so I can test it with that, but I don't go scuba diving. They redesigned the band, a couple of other nice little things, worth the $20 for sure. Has anything else changed or improved? We're going to find out now. I feel like a dubious street vendor here. Look at this array of watches, right? So we're not at a loss for choices. And certainly I could have brought out the Fitbit and some other things, but my arm is only so long here. And you get the immediate idea here in terms of sizing. This is the smaller Apple Watch, the 38 millimeter. And it's one of the teeniest watches around. And you know, yeah, that, that one's pretty bearable if you're a woman or somebody who doesn't have large bones. This over here is the Gear S3 Frontier. This is the new equivalent of brass knuckles. This is so heavy and so hard, you could really just hurt somebody with it. And here you can see this is their Gear Fit 2 Pro. This is the original Gear Fit right here next to it. They look almost identical, don't they? And they are physically almost identical. The screen is actually a little bit smaller, 1.5 inches versus 1.58 inches on this guy right here. And you really couldn't tell the difference, could you? This one's five grams heavier at 34 grams. You really can't tell the difference there either. One thing that is important though is the watch band has changed. Now the watch bands on these are removable though. Samsung has never made like awesome bands to swap in and out. There are re release clips right there so you could take the bands off. Anyway, the old one used the peg and loop style closure right here. Now I never had a problem with this pulling off and I was wondering what, what was up with that, but I discovered it's true. If you put this near the end of the loop here and you give it a good yank so you got caught on something, it would fly off. So now we've moved to this kind of closure right here, the usual kind of tongue and hole closure like you'd have on any watch band. And I don't think that's ever going to come off. It's available in small and large. So is the last generation. And this is the small. Now I'm almost six feet tall and I have huge hands, but pretty small wrists. Still, if you're a guy with delicate bones or you're not a real big guy, probably the small would still be the one for you because you can see how many extra loopholes I still have available here. But there's a large for those of you who have big wrists. The pattern has changed too. This is a nice kind of diamond pattern to it. It's a hypoallergenic rubbery material. The old one had a stippled look, so uh, it's up to you as to which you think is more attractive there. I suppose you could even swap these bands back and forth if you had the old gen model. Controls and everything are in the same place. So what is this thing? It is a smartwatch. It runs Tizen OS 3, which is Samsung's wearable operating system. In fact, they put it on phones for a while, but not so much anymore. I, it's a smartwatch, yeah, but there's about 3,000 Tizen apps out, out there. Not all of them are compatible with the band form factor with that kind of screen size. So not all of them are going to work there. And I think really what most people want is something that pipes over notifications. And that's what this one does. Not just your core notifications for your email, your Gmail, your messages, your phone call, missed phone calls, that sort of thing, but also third-party apps. It'll pipe over notifications of something. If your Amazon app sends you a notification of CNN or whatever, those work as well. And you can do basic things like respond with a canned response to a Gmail message or a text message. It is compatible with not just Samsung Galaxy phones, but with all Android phones. You download the Gear app and also iOS. Now here's the kicker. This just started shipping this month, September 2017, but the app still hasn't been approved on the App Store, Apple's App Store. So it should be by September 30th, Samsung says. So if you have an iPhone, I would wait until the end of September to pick one of these up if you're really interested in it. And then obviously it has this appeal. It's half the price of an Apple Watch Series 3 LTE, uh, and not quite half the price of the non-LTE model, which would be the fairer com comparison because this one does not have LTE. It has Bluetooth 4.2 and has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and that is how it's going to communicate not just with your phone, but you can also have it use the internet connection back and forth. So in case you're at a Bluetooth range with your phone, it can still pipe over the internet and get data going back and forth. The display is 216 by 432 pixels. It is AMOLED. It does not have an ambient 
light sensor to adjust the brightness on the display. So you manually choose it. I keep it on seven and most of the time it is viewable outdoors in the Texas sun. 10 for sure is, but you know, when you go inside, you're going to want to lower it because that's darn bright looking. It has four gigabytes of storage, which is the same as the non-pro previous model. And you can store songs on there. And there's a little gear application inside the gear application. There's a little section where you can transfer songs to the watch itself. And then you use Bluetooth headphones to, well, play music from the watch itself if you don't want to have your phone with you. You can do podcasts. Uh, it might involve actually using the file manager and stuff like that on your phone, but it, you can't do it. The stair counter is not wonky on the Pro, unlike the previous model. Uh, the previous model was IP68 water resistant, so you know you could rinse it off, that sort of thing, if you're washing the dishes, no big deal taking a shower, but it, the barometer was easily fooled by moisture. If you sweated a lot or if you did dunk your hands, sometimes you could gain four extra flights of stairs climbed. That doesn't happen with the new model, so it's more accurate. Same CPU inside, it's a one gigahertz dual core Samsung Exynos CPU and 512 megs of RAM. If you go for the round gear sport, you get 768 megs of RAM, probably because it actually had more room for flash storage. I haven't found it to be RAM deprived yet, nor is it ever slow. There's offline Spotify playback. If you have a premium account, take that Apple. Well, maybe it'll come to the Apple Watch. We don't know. Right now, the Apple Watch with Watch OS 4 is still waiting for Apple Music and offline pod podcasts to return. It has a vibrate feature for notifications and alarms. There is no speaker on board. The watch is available in all black or this black and red look here, which I think is kind of cool. And I mean, it looks certainly like obviously plastic, but hey, it's okay. It's a, it's a sports band, right? Buttons are over here. This is the home button. And it, this is like such a simple, easy thing to use. This is the back button up here. If you want to get your notifications, you swipe this way. You can see I've got Instagram, I've got Twitter, I've got all those notifications there. There's your back button. Swipe through here. You can see how many calories you burn, your steps, heart rate, floors. You can add more stuff. There's an add button right there. And if you hit the home button, it's also your application switcher. So there's more applications installed on this from the factory than there are for the older model. And that's because, well, you get a bunch of free subscriptions here. So I think they want you to notice that. Because this is a swimming watch, you have Speedo on. And you can choose your pool and the length of the pool. Now, Samsung's own exercise app actually will track your heart rate too. So I think it's a little bit better than Speedo on. My Fitness Pal is here. You can enter your calories on that that you have consumed. And you get a year of MyFitnessPal premium with this. I have how many calories I have consumed, a quick ad. You also get Endo Mondo premium for a year. And that one, you can start and stop your runs right on the watch. You got Map My Run, you got Under Armour Record, you get the idea. And Samsung's own exercise application, which I think is actually pretty good. So you've got a bazillion kinds of activities here. So you have exercise bike versus regular bike. This is a GPS with GLONASS on here. So it denotes the difference because it'll turn the GPS on if you're going for a regular bike ride or a run. If you're on the treadmill or an exercise cycle, it will not turn the GPS on. So it can track your run. There's no visual map on the screen of this. So you've got hiking, you've got cycling, you've got treadmill, you've got swimming, of course, lunges, crunches, squats, yoga, rowing machine. Other workout for anything that isn't covered here. Uh, for, um, shall we say, a moderately serious exercise person, this is probably pretty good. If you're really, really hardcore, there are things like the Garmin Fenix HR and others that do swimming and really have a lot of granular stuff going on. I think for most people, it's fine. Samsung's big on caffeine tracking and water tracking, so that's on here. Find my phone, handy if you lose it. There's a timer on here. There's a stopwatch on here. You got access to your schedule. You got the weather. You got or Spotify and an alarm which will vibrate. It will not make noise, but it will try to vibrate you awake. There are a lot of third-party watch faces for this if you want. Some free, some pay for. One of my favorites is the Pip-Boy. This is one of the built-in ones. This one's new for the Fit 2 Pro. This one gives you a lot of information. I like it. I always like handy access to the weather. And you can tap on the weather and there it is and get more information. A lot of information actually. So that's pretty nice. Here in Texas we have wacky weather, so it's good to keep track of. Just like the Apple Watch and other watches, press and hold, and you can switch between the available watch faces, and you can stylize it if there are any options for that. This, too, has complications, so in some cases you can add other information onto the watch face by using complications.
This is what the gear app looks like on here. And I actually have a pop-up because it supports more than one gear. So the old Fit 2 is still paired to the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 as well. So you got basic information of stats, how much RAM, how much storage, how much battery you have left. You, links to the Samsung Health application, which is downloadable if it's not pre-installed on your Samsung phone, for example. You will have that, but for others, you won't. You can control settings. You can set which apps have notifications and which ones don't. You can add watch faces here. Control the gear connection, whether it uses Wi-Fi and the internet as well when it's out of Bluetooth range for the phone. And then you can go to the store and pick up some more apps. And this is the Samsung store where they have, you can just look at watch faces, top applications, and view by categories. Yeah, probably <laughs> pre-installed, you'll get most of the things that you wanted. I did add Spotify, for example, and I added the timer because it wasn't pre-installed. But that's how you go about adding apps. And it's reasonably quick. And by the way, when you're putting music on, it actually uses Wi-Fi, so it's quicker. It's not going to try to do that over Bluetooth. So Samsung loves freebies with product launches, don't they? Just like with the Samsung Galaxy Note phones, they give away wireless chargers and SD cards and other stuff like that. This time, they're going to give you a $80 Uflex Bluetooth headset, the kind that's meant for exercise around the neck with the little earbuds on, you know, wires. So that's pretty cool if you buy it sometime up until September 30th. So you get an $80 headset with your $200 watch. Hmm, not too bad. And again, you also get those premium, premium memberships to Endomondo and to MyFitnessPal. And those are not time limited, so you don't have to buy it by September 30th to get that. Lastly, there's battery life. That's, this is one thing that's pretty refreshing compared to the Android Wear watches and the Apple Watch. And this one typically, they claim up to three days of average use, and I get about two days, and that's with exercising for at least 45 minutes each day. If I'm a lazy sloth and I don't exercise, well, I do actually manage to get three days. It's nice to not worry about charging it every night at bedtime. Has a 200 milliamp battery and it comes with the same charging stand, wireless charging stand, as the last generation one, which you can see right here. The charging block that plugs into the wall, it does not come with. So you'll have to use your phone's one spare one that you have, or you can plug it into the USB port on your computer. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to use the GPS, then they say that it's about nine hours. But unless you're lucky enough to be hiking in the far reaches of Yosemite for nine hours straight, I, I think that's going to be fine for most folks. You know, if you're going out for an hour run, it's, it's not going to kill it. Now let's talk about the heart rate monitors. An optical heart rate monitor like, well, most Android Wear watches and the Apple Watch. And the sensors are right here, and you'll see them flashing to try to take your heart rate. And there's a new option here. The Gear Fit 2 only did continuous heart rate monitoring when you were exercising. This one, there's actually an option. And you can turn that on if you want it to be on. Instead of checking about once every hour when you're fairly still, it'll do it. Well continuously. That too can have an impact on battery life, just like if you use the always on display, which really I haven't found does use up the battery so much. So anyway, the last, I was hoping there was an improvement in the heart rate monitor. The, the gear fit to when moving around, which is ironic, you're exercising, of course you're moving around. You know, things that had your arm moving around a whole lot, like say weightlifting or even the rowing machine, it would have bizarre readings. Now, even Android Wear and the Apple Watch weren't so good at that, though the Apple Watch was a little better. The way around that, if you're having that problem like I do, is to just wear it like this. Now, some people do wear their watches like this, so I just take it and I reverse it. If you do this, it is spot on. So keep that in mind if you're exercising with this and you're like, ah, the heart rate monitor is quacky this solves the problem. However, it certainly would be nice that you don't have to take it off and reverse it. In terms of automatic stuff, it will detect exercise. If you've been at it for about 10 minutes or so, it says, hey, we think you've been exercising. We're going to start tracking that exercise. It also detects if you've gone to sleep. Now, the last generation model did that too. It's based on your lack of movement and your lowered heart rate. It's a decent sleep tracker. It, it, it's, it's not bad, actually, as they go. If you dunk your arm in the water, the watch will go into swim mode and start tracking your, well, ex swimming kind of exercise. It also disables a touch screen. You'll have to press the side button to activate it again. Because that's because water is capacitive and water touching the touch screen would confuse it. So that's why it temporarily disables it. Unlike the Apple Watch, you don't have to go through a dry me out routine <laughs> where you hear it going Nee! like a little mosquito and it pushes the water out of the speaker hole because, well, this doesn't have a speaker. 
So that's the Gear Fit 2 Pro. It's available now. And again, if you want the Gear Sport, which is the round face version, it's probably going to be about $50 more and it's not out yet, but that's available too if you prefer a round face. Uh, just like with the last generation model, I think this one's going to be popular, especially around the holiday season and especially in the New Year's when everybody makes their resolutions for exercise. For 200 bucks, and you know how the pricing is, it's going to drop down $20 or more, certainly by Black Friday season. This is a really good product. You've got smartwatch features, the most important ones. You've got the notifications going on here. A lot of fitness tracking. I call it a smartwatch light fitness tracking medium. It's really, for, again, for those of you who are into fitness, and you exercise frequently like I do, but you're not like super hardcore. You're not marathon man or woman. That sort of thing where you want exact precision and all that sort of thing, there are still better products out there that are more expensive and more specialized. But I think for most people who are exercising, this is pretty full featured. And you get the core smartwatch features, even some downloadable apps. I'd still like them to improve the heart rate monitor on this. Wearing it on the inside of the wrist is not the end of the world, but it would be nice to not have to swap it either, position-wise. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.